I, I, okay. wanted, I want this sure. documented in the sense of how that changed. Oh yes, and, please and, do. And what it took to get the change to happen. Mm -hmm. This is really, I think it's really important. Because um, that's what young people do. Yeah, they, they come they, in. They come in and, and, and they put their foot down and they won't budge. And I didn't budge. And so I started using those cleaning products. And my housemates at House Julian said, hey, you know what? Every year, the Vorstand, which is the executive committee of the Gertianum, of the Anthroposophical Society worldwide, uh, they do a, um, they do a, uh, have a meeting with all the students that are in Dorna, because at that time there were a lot of different trainings. There were right. sculpture trainings and painting trainings and rugby yeah. trainings and mm -hmm. you name it, there was a training there, mm -hmm. Anthroposophical training. And they said every year they, you know, about a month into everybody's training, they, they, they invite the students from around the community to come and then the, the, the Forstant um, uh, introduces themselves for each part of their division, like the agricultural and the science section and the arts section, and they describe, and the youth section, they describe what they, um, what they did. Yeah. And, and my, my housemate said, you got to go there. You raise your hand, man. It doesn't matter if you don't speak German or not. Just raise your hand. Most people in Europe speak English. They do. And, and, and just, you know, tell them what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they don't need just to hear, hear pleasantries about how well it's going. No, no. Especially if they're poisoning the water cycle. Exactly. So I, I raised my hand, you know, and, and when uh, Herr schmidt Brabant finished his introduction, I raised my hand and he asked me to come down. He was very polite and he was very, um, you know, he's, he was very warm and, 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 and it was, I guess, you know, Americans at that time were a bit of an oddity too, you know, and so I, I shared with him, I mean, with all the students who were there, you know, hundreds of students that were in the audience uh, about what was really going on in yeah. the Gertianum. And yeah. it was difficult. I mean, I, I prefaced it with, the good work that was going on at the Rudolf Steiner College. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they were using natural cleaning products, and yeah, they were yeah. they were conscious of um, of uh, of how we work with with the earth and how we work with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I I basically just brought out that that you know, obviously, people at the Gertianum weren't really working cooperatively. Otherwise, that wouldn't have been going, you know, poisoning the water for so cycle long. for so long, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was, you know, that created quite a stir and commotion. And, and but it was the start of the change. It was the start of the change. But it, I tell you, a week went by and I thought someone from the Vorstadt would maybe, you know, connect with me and they didn't. So I had to go knock on Jürgen Schmidt's door and say, look, you know, what's going to happen now? Yeah. We, mm -hmm. There's a lot of chemicals down there in the yeah. Gertianum and they yeah. need to... Yeah. Should, I think we should send them all back and we can start buying this new product from these people in, in Arlesheim. Mm -hmm. And he uh, was a bit stubborn about it, you know. Well, you're going to have to do us, you're going to have to do an inventory of what we have, what it's used for, and then give a, a, a then um, suggest a product as an alternative. And so Frau Keister and I got together and we, we you know, we, we made all, we, we documented all this. And I came back a week later. And I knocked on his door again, and I laid it out, and I said, "Look, you know, this is the alternative." Right. And, you know, and and I, I handed it over, and uh, and I thought something was going to happen, and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And a year later, uh, that summer, another pallet arrived at the Gertianum. You know, it was just packed mm -hmm. full of poison mm -hmm. for another year of poisoning the water mm -hmm. cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a while for them to understand. To understand the the severity of the problem, deep problem. But 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 go on and say when did it actually change? So it, it so uh, Frau Keister and I uh, started a study group uh, in the mornings. We tried. Um, it was difficult. Uh, uh, Herr Schmidt Brabant had written a, a book at that time about the task of the house mother and and. Mm -hmm. and, and being conscious about the home mm -hmm. and, and cleaning and stuff and mm -hmm. that was a great text so we started doing started that study group we had a lot of resistance from the Gertianum itself about actually mm -hmm. doing that in the, in the building mm -hmm. but eventually we um, and and anyway that was um, uh, so the second year the the Vorstand again did their presentation 
did their meeting with the students. And of course, I came back the second year and I raised my hand again. It hasn't changed yet. And I said, nothing's changed. Yeah. And, and not only that, you know, um, you know, the students don't really have an appropriate place uh, to post their needs on a, on a, on at least a, a, an announcement board, or you know, yes, if they want to yes. sell something, or they want a room for rent. Yeah. Or and have also, a ride with somebody, or something yeah, yeah. There, there was uh, the other thing that was in Europe that was going on at that time. It probably still is. Is mit Fahrgelegenheit. It mm -hmm. was. Uh, in other words, when you wanted to, it was a hitchhiking for service. Sure, yeah. Sure. And the Gertianum has you know hundreds of people who come there, and they didn't have, they weren't initiating, they weren't part of that network. Mm -hmm. So I was just. Anyway, so in all, all kinds of new things approaching the Goethe Arnhem that they had never even heard. Never, never I mean, heard in North America, it's normal to take a ride with somebody. It is in yeah. Europe. It wasn't. Well, no, it was in Europe, but in, at the Goethe Arnhem, it wasn't. It was an island in, in away from everything. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, um, at, at that meeting, an argument ensued. Uh, Herr Schmidt Brabant basically told me to sit down and shut up. Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. of my uh, one of my classmates, uh, Claudia, a uh, fiery woman, she mm -hmm. stood up and said, you can't talk to my friend like that. That mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they started arguing and it was, mm -hmm. you know, it was a mess. Um, and it was all because they, they, they refused to stop poisoning the earth. Yeah. And I just changed I just, their ways, changed their ways, changed the habit, the prevailing habit. Yeah. And I was more than willing to, uh, you know, I did as much work as I could and and finding out what was the alternative. So anyway, um, the so third... that was a little so bit, the, the, maybe the, the, if the, I can interrupt, um, that was a little bit a start of uh, you practicing not to go along with the normal flow, but when something needs to be changed, you can actually stand up, you're the man, you have to change something. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, pointing, yeah. pointing on to what we're actually going to talk about as far as the arrhythmia is concerned. Right. You know, because there are habits there too that might need to be changed. So I can sort of see, I don't know if you agree with me, but that yeah, uh, there's a little bit, uh, you know, a bit of practicing to stand up for something that you need, but that needs to change. But everybody is in a habit often can't let go of it. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. so maybe we can go there. Yes, well, so at that point, just to tidy this, this story up, because now the Gertianum uh, has an a incredible employee. Uh, oddly enough, in my first, after my first year of training, my friend Steve Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, I studied Steiner with in San Diego, came out to Switzerland mm -hmm. and uh, I put him up in the attic where we were staying mm -hmm. and um, and he ended up falling in love with Linda Monte. There we go. And they got married and now, you know, the rest is history. You know, Linda Thomas is doing an exceptional job. Uh, and she uh, published a book as far as I understand. Yes, because she herself has, uh, you know, her own spiritual capacities yeah. uh, of understanding this whole elemental world and, and can, you know, yeah. she has her own clairvoyance that yeah. we all have, yeah. I think. Um, and so it's just, it's, but the, I guess the point being is that, uh, you know, the, the youth have to stand up and, and, and yes. not, and not just go with the status quo. Exactly. And, and it wasn't easy for me. And, and, and yet, you know, my past of trauma, uh, I guess just made me, uh, had allowed me to stick in there even yeah. through thick and thin. Yeah. Yeah. It was not you an easy to, path. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing. Are you actually going to uh, go with the flow that because it's easy, or are you actually going to stand up and say no? And that's really North America is the place where we have to do that. Mm. So, I, um, you know, along alongside all this that was going on at the Gertiam, of course, I was doing my arrhythmic training, um, and I loved it. You know. Uh, um, I guess part of my, uh, my part of my uh, I don't know if you call it a gift or whatever you what part of my capacity is to um, be like a young child, mm -hmm. be childlike, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and take things in in a childlike mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. um, and that's helped me considerably. I think mm -hmm. in, in receiving things, uh, and so I didn't question much of what I received in my arrhythmic training. Mm -hmm. I uh, just drunk it in and was really grateful for what I was receiving and, 
And I felt like, you know, my teachers, they were preserving very well what was, you know, these original works of Steiner. And mm -hmm, I had mm -hmm. great teachers. I mean, mm -hmm. they were all in the stage group. Mm -hmm. So they were active in, in performing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then my older teachers, uh, Frau Tuschow, Frau von Stocker, uh, Heidi Kaltenegger. Um, uh, I mean, I could just go on and on. There was so many in incredible individuals that uh, mm -hmm. were sharing uh, from this classical period in Eurythmy. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I, Adrian and I, um, Adrian ended up coming back in my second year of training, and we then uh, uh, we got married and had two children together, Ava and William, and uh, and so sometime at the end of my third year of training. I was contacted by the Rudolf Steiner call, uh, no, uh, the uh, Sacramento Waldorf School. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They were looking for a eurythmist mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the, the next year, because mm -hmm. I, I still had a year of eurythmic training. Cool, yeah. Anyway, so they asked if I would teach there because I did my teacher training there, and I guess they trusted I would be able to do that. And so at that point, having two children, you know, that was, um, I was used to not sleeping and working a lot. <laughs> um, and, uh, and of course, you know, anthroposophical uh, societies create a safe environment, you know, because what happened to me in the military, it, it, it was very, I have a lot of problems sleeping and, uh, you know, strong startle response and all these things that go along with um, being attacked in your sleep. Um, and so the anthroposophical society created this artistic, you know, the arts, the movement, the journaling, all that was inherent in all of, of anthroposophy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I took that job, I finished my training, um, um, I was just, I'm sorry, I was, in, in, interesting they call it a training. Yes, that's we, we, really an amazing we, we, thing. We, we, you know, and I still keep saying it, because we train animals, you know, mm -hmm. and we, we should be schooling each other, or yeah. I don't have another name for it instead yeah. of training, but yeah. it's, anyway, um, just a side note. Yeah, uh, but an important one. It is. It an is. An important I think. one. Because we shouldn't be calling it a training. Uh, probably not. Yeah. You know. um, and and well, anyway. Uh, so there I was uh, in Sacramento. But let me go back to to my rhythmic training mm -hmm. Just because in my second sure. year, mm -hmm. I had an experience that has basically set the foundation in some ways to. Um, to what I call my water body, mm -hmm. an experience of my etheric body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I call it the water body. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and applied eurythmy. Yes. The applied eurythmy is what I'm attempting to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there we, uh, me and, and this uh, one of my Dutch uh, uh, classmates, her name is Beetje, we were doing a salamander form with a eurythmy rod, and it's a fire form, so you have to move very quickly. Mm -hmm. The tempo is very quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, when you got to the end of the form, you, you would you would you would stop abruptly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when that stopping abruptly, mm -hmm. I, I could feel how uh, what I call now my I could feel my my natural water displacement. Yeah. I held my container still. Yeah. And yet there was still slosh. The, the, the slosh effect I call it yeah. was yeah. happening while I was stopped. And then I could feel when it reached its apogee and its peak, its crest, mm -hmm. and when it wanted to go back. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and then I listened to it, and I realized that I could listen to my water, and it'll tell me when to go back. Exactly, yeah. And not just, li not just stop and wait for the other person, and now do we go back? And, and Which then, normally happens when you have a veil. You can tell when you're... Yeah, you a veil allows veil. you to see, because it, it, it flows. And it, exactly. exactly. But it's outside of you. you it's it's outside. much better to listen to this water effect, because it's inside of you. You have much more, if you can make it conscious. And that's a very good point, Mario, yeah. because um, yeah. that's what the veil allows us to do, is to see yeah. the, 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 uh, the, the internal, our internal flow. Yeah. And what's been happening here with me is that there's this attachment to these veils, yeah. and, and, and everything keeps going to the outside yeah. in this intellectual way instead exactly. of listening to the water inside of us. In, exactly, exactly. And that's what that, I think that's the, the point that we're going to try to bring across here. Yeah, it's a, it's a very complicated but uh, incredible point. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that, that, that planted a seed in, in, in my teaching. And so when I got to Sacramento, 
you know, I was in my post Gnostic Eurythmy bubble, mm -hmm. and I. You well, know, you do something for four years, and you imprint that into your water body. Yeah. Um, uh, you have to find a, a way to digest that all, and that takes time. It takes time. And, um, and, and my, the, my students, my the students in Sacramento, those high school kids, really taught me a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, uh, they basically were asking me to question everything that I was bringing to them. And... That's what has, you know, basically has been leading me towards understanding eurythmy in a holistic way. Yeah. So. And holistic meaning, say a little bit more about what you actually what mean What is holism? By, yeah, and, and the opposite when I mean, it's not, because I think that really shows. Yes. Well, you know, I've always, I've, I've always studied, you know, other disciplines mm -hmm. along my path, mm -hmm. uh, not just Rudolf Steiner. So I, right. um, and I've been seeing that each path has been saying the same thing, but they just have a different language. Language about it, yes. And so, and then when I came across the, the, the sort of the theory of holism, mm -hmm. which, which basically states that in every part, there's an image of the whole. Yes. As above, so below. Yeah. Like you have with the fractals too. Exactly. It's all connected. Yeah. So what, what I found is that, you know, my hand is a part of my being. Right. Mm -hmm. But written within the very lines and form of my hand is a map of who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We call that palmistry. Right. It's in your foot and we, we call that reflexology. Mm -hmm. It's in my iris and call that iridology. Exactly. So there are all these ancient disciplines that um, understood holism. Yeah. And, and, and that is what has been... Um, helping the ancients understand our world and, and themselves. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is that not until the 1950s when Watson and Crick had, had uh, discovered the DNA, mm -hmm. that he, he, here we have come full circle mm -hmm. as a society um, where that science takes the smallest part of our being. Right. And there again, you find this map of the whole. Yes. There's that little part. There's another exactly. map of the whole. Exactly. Yeah. Which is really, you know, an astounding, um, I think, an astounding revelation uh, with regards to all the ancient disciplines. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they didn't have microscopes and telescopes to right. understand holism. No. And computers. No. They, they knew this on a, on a more intuitive level. Yeah. So... That was a that's a really important premise, because and now I started to use this my holistic tool to look at eurythmy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in eurythmy, it's stated that uh, we talk about there's physical body, etheric body, astral body, and ego body. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're talking about a fourfold archetype, uh -huh. there's going to be four those four qualities. Yeah. That are going to be inherent in one part. Right. Right. So. What was interesting about Rudolf Steiner's work is that he didn't, you know, he didn't take the hand or the eye or the ear or anything that was already been done. Mm -hmm. He took the speech organism, uh -huh. the, the larynx and yeah. the associated organs that are with it. And he said, yeah. let's look at that part yeah. and see how that represents the whole. Yeah. And of course, since this is a creative organ, we speak and we can sing with this organ. Right. You see, it has profound implications for all movements that we do. Yeah not just for doing classical eurythmy. What Rudolf Steiner was, was pointing towards was that in all of our movements, not only when we're an artist or when we're, we're a scholar in our movements or when we're healing in our movements. Or, when we peel potatoes, Or, or right? when we peel potatoes in our day-to-day -day movements. Yeah. Embedded in our movement gestalt, mm -hmm. in our etheric body, mm -hmm. are these universal principles of speech and music. Right. Parts and whole. Yeah. So I realized that, oh, okay, so what are the four qualities of etheric movement? Mm -hmm. Because I've only been taught in Eurythmy that there's really kind of only one. Mm -hmm. That's kind of this airy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 